Welcome to another episode in the Michael Jordan series collection. We are doing 23 Michael Jordan videos in 23 days. Today we're looking at John Starks and Michael Jordan and the rivalry between these two players. And John Starks tells the story of Michael Jordan's trash talk. He also talks about what happened in these fights, the 54 point revenge game when MJ was down 2-0 in the playoffs. And lastly, he tells the story of when Michael Jordan came out of retirement to drop 52 points on his own teammate, Scottie Pippen, and he talked trash to Scottie as well. These are the stories, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you've been enjoying the series, I'd greatly appreciate if you guys could help me out by hitting that like button. Let's aim for 5,000 likes for the next episode tomorrow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification so you're notified when a new episode releases. There's also a playlist that has every single MJ story that has been made so far on the top right of your screen and in the description box. And also be sure to check out the full content and footage used in this video in their entirety, which is in the description and on the screen right now. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. John, you guys had so many battles against Jordan's Bulls in the 90s. Any anecdotes that you can share about maybe some of the things that Jordan said in the middle of those games or some of the other Bulls said during those games? Now, remember, this is a rated G program, but yeah. maybe you have a good story or two. Okay, yeah. so now tell me the experience. You got Michael Jordan. You got to guard Michael Jordan, yeah. right? You know, whenever you get a chance to play against someone like Michael Jordan, uh, for me personally, uh, the one-on-one -on -one matchups was fun to me uh, because the level of competition, uh, you know, that he brought every single night, you had to raise your game up. And so in college, I used to have my wife when we was on the road. If I couldn't tape the game, I used to have her tape all the Chicago Bulls games. And so I would watch him when I, when I uh, come home. And so I used to study him all the time. And, and so when I got the opportunity to play against him, I had already played against him in my mind. Does he talk a lot on court? No, he, he don't talk unless you talk to him. And oh, you don't okay. want to do that. <laughs> Michael Jordan has ignited the crowd. He started that by talking to the young John Starks and causing him to lose his concentration. We've seen it before. He was talking He was talking at the time. What did he tell you? What did he say? Well, he told me before the night over, you're going to be calling me Mr. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Starks punched it away, and you saw Michael with the... Uh, Conversation. Look at Starks right back at him. The one thing when you play against Michael Jordan, you not only have to stand up to him physically, you have to stand up to him mentally because he will torment you with his play. Just like that, in your face. See, he looks for an edge. He looks for something to get him in this kind of frame of mind. He wants Starks to come back at him. And so, uh, I knew being this player that I am, you don't want to get him riled up. He already come into play, but if you start talking noise to him, he's going to take you to another level. He's going to take his game to another level. We know over the years he's expressed that he always respected you as, as somebody that guarded him. I, I thought, you know, you guys had that kind of relationship where he did show you respect for the way you played him and how hard you played against him. Did you ever have that moment with him where you felt like he's about to snap, I better back off? The Bulls had made short work of their first two playoff opponents, but they knew that the Eastern Conference Finals would be different because in this long-awaited series, they would be pitted against their most bitter adversary. In last year's playoffs, the New York Knicks had physically punished the Bulls. Oh, he is ripped by Starks. The anticipation been there all year long and uh, we understand that in order for us to get into a championship that we have to go through Chicago and uh, we understand come Sunday it's going to be all out war. I played very well that first game against him. I love, I'm a very competitive person as everybody knows. Michael Jordan was the ultimate test and John Starks would step up and accept the challenge. Or uh, is he read MJ real well? He has studied films on Michael Jordan, because he's playing better than I've ever seen anybody play. Jordan high on the right side, turns, there's a quick jumper, and he put up an air ball. The Knicks are flat out playing Chicago at both ends right now. With Starks containing Jordan, the Knicks gained confidence with every play. Starks for three. Fittingly, it was Starks who would close out game two 
and emphatically stake New York to a 2-0 series lead. Knox goes baseline, and boom! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! Oh, what a play by Knox! Knox <laughs> with the spark! That play should just about finish off the bull. At the end of the game, I went up to him. I said, you ain't get Mr. Jordan out of me tonight. I think in game number three, uh, in 93, uh, where we got into a little scuffle uh, in Chicago, he thought that I was trying to attack his sore wrist. I guess he had a you know problem with his wrist at the time. And I slapped at the ball and hit his wrist by accident. I think he was so frustrated what was going on, obviously coming off of uh, the big media blitz about him going to Atlantic City the night before game two. And of course, that much talked about visit to an Atlantic City casino by Michael Jordan on Thursday before the assembled media that has been covering the Knicks Bulls series, Jordan gave his version of the trip. It, it, it's attacked in my private life and I really didn't like it. I don't, I don't agree with it, but I felt I need to come out and express that and tell the truth so you guys can quit hallucinating and taking it further than what it is. And, um, and I think it just kind of boiled over into that whole altercation. I think he was disgusted with what happened and Michael had to respond. Michael could make things up to motivate himself. We didn't have to make anything up here. This was real. And they end up kicking me out the game for whatever reason. I'm not sure why, but they kicked me out the game. And I remember, you know, the media coming up to me and, uh, you know, asking me questions about what happened and what have you. And so I just went into, you know, I didn't play against Michael Jordan long enough. And I know when he agitated and he pretty much just agitated over what went down you know with the media and, and them reporting that he went to Atlantic City and what have you and so I can remember uh, Patrick coming to me that single night and Michael called him and, t and told him that tell John I'm sorry for that you know he apologized uh, you know because he appreciated what I said I stay up to 2 30 in the morning myself you know uh, watching TV you know and some guys you know may like to go out but like I say, that's his business and it shouldn't be publicized. Because that's all it was. He was just frustrated about what was going on. And, um, and I wish he would have said it in person, but you know, sending it through Big Fella, you know, that, that was good enough. The Bulls had been ignited, and even more ominously, Michael Jordan was about to be unleashed. Michael Jordan off to a good start, showing the signs. Held down by the Knicks through the first three games of the series, Jordan would be shackled no longer. Michael firing over. Slot was complete. He had scorched the Knicks for 54 points. Michael Jordan with 54, 54 of the Bulls, 105 points. He accounted for 51 percent 
of the offense. We used to get scouting reports on certain guys, and you look at the scouting report, and they say, well, you can take your right hand away. You, you knew, like, to go left with certain people. Mm -hmm. um, and then with Jordan, I think you said it, it just said, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. That's it. That's all it said. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> On him, it's just like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And obviously, he was the ultimate competitor uh, to play against. So he, he was, was, he was special in that way, yeah. Plus, he had a will like no other player that I ever played against. Certain guys I can get to mentally, but him I could never get to mentally. And believe me, I tried my best. But, you know, he was that special player that you couldn't break his will. You know, yeah. if anything, you're just taking them to another level. I can remember, you know, doing this is doing when he retired, and Scottie Pippen had a uh, All Star uh, benefit game in Chicago, and he was having a hard time selling uh, tickets. This was in 95, the summer of 95. And um, he talked Michael into playing. And as soon as he announced Michael was playing, the tickets sold out in an hour. <laughs> Michael had a game high 52 points and leading his team to a 187 to 150 victory. The fans not only welcomed Jordan back, they also got their first chance to see him go one on one with Pippen. He found himself matched up against Scotty Pippen. What y'all saw today with he and I, it's been going on practice every day, you know, when I was playing against him. It, it was kind of tough because I didn't, I didn't want him to embarrass me out on the court, but, you know, Michael's one of the greatest players that ever played the game, and it's, it's tough to shut him down. And I can remember I'm on Michael's team, which I was thankful for that. I'm playing on his team, and Scotty called himself stacking the team against him. And he said before he went out, just give me the ball and move out the way. So he was on the court, and everybody gave him the ball. Him and Scotty were one on one for the majority of the whole game, and he lit Scotty up for like 55 points. He had dropped in 52 points. I hadn't played all summer, so I've been working out for the last three or four days, just trying to get my win back and get some of my touch back. You know, anytime that I want to pick up a basketball and go back out and play, I can do that. And if there's any doubt that Michael could come back at the top of his game, well, his performance put all of those doubts to rest. It was one of the most incredible things that I've ever seen in my life. A guy could not play basketball for that long, practice three days, and then have 52 points. Jordan's appearance guaranteed a packed house for Pippen's charity event, but it meant a lot to him personally as well. I really didn't have an opportunity to play my last game in Chicago Stadium. You know, I played it in Phoenix. And you know, what I did at the end of the game in terms of kissing the floor goodbye was truly what that was. It was an opportunity to say goodbye to the stadium as well as uh, to my opportunities of playing in the stadium. And, uh, it meant a lot to me. It's given me a lot. Uh, and it's a mutual love and mutual understanding. And, uh, you know, it's just time to move on. <laughs> Cheering went up to him. And, <laughs> and mind you, he'd been, you know, he'd been playing baseball. He stepped out on the court. And, uh, he told Scotty, don't you ever blame the stack the team against me again. <laughs> but that's, you know, you get the, you get the wit is great. And that's what made them great. Uh, when you're playing against them, you know, you just in the mix and, and you're concentrating on trying to beat them. But uh, the one spot that I really enjoyed when uh, he was talking about uh, uh, him uh, and, you know, and he had to take a break. Yeah, I'm not sure if y'all remember that. He had to take a break because he was tearing up. Emotional, yep. It is who I am. That's how I played the game. That was my mentality. If you don't want to play that way, don't play that way. Break. Yeah, you got emotional about it because I... To me, I'm, I'm looking at it and and I'm saying to myself, okay, he feel like people, he was misunderstood as a player. Now you really understand what made him such a great player and uh, his passion for the game, his level of, of um, competitiveness uh, that he had uh, during his time. He's always thinking ahead and you could just see. And 
uh, his mind is always working, you know what I mean? And I, I would say this, he probably was the best fundamentally sound superstar that I didn't played against, mm -hmm. you know, from the standpoint of, he didn't do a lot, he just got the spots on the court. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just like a surgeon. He just get over here, I wanna get a shot there, I'm pump fake you, take one or two dribbles, I'm get to that spot, right. you know what I mean? And so, you never see him, hardly see him take a bad, bad shot. Right. You know, always on balance. Uh, he was just fundamentally sound. That's, I think that's why the game was so easy to him. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please help me out by hitting that like button. Let's aim for 5,000 likes for the next video. Here are two new episodes that I think you will also enjoy, so be sure to check them out, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode tomorrow. Take care.